Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to be making two cards. I'm going to be using the Spellbinders Clear Stamp and Die of the Month, as well as the Small Die of the Month. These are some subscription clubs through Spellbinders. They have several clubs, but these are two that I receive every month. And let's take a look first at the stamp set for the clear stamp of the month. It has this cute typewriter and it has some flowers and some greenery. There are some sentiments there that say be bold or italic, never regular. You push all the right buttons. Once upon a time, I'm typing this note to say thank you and happy birthday to the most amazing person. So for my first card, I am going to color the typewriter up with some of my Copic markers. So I'm stamping out the images with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock. And now after I've stamped the black and white images, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the leaves, which are the solid stamps, and I'm going to take my green ink pad and I'm going to stamp those out in green ink. So some of the leaves are a solid stamp, so if you ink them up with a colored ink, you can just get a solid image. So I have a lighter green that I'm inking them up with, so I'm gonna go ahead and press that down really well, and I'm just going to ink them up one more time with this lighter green ink just to get a better impression. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of a darker ink. These are the scrapbook.com hybrid inks and what I love about them is that they actually come in a series of like four different colors in a color family. So the first one I used was a number three. The second one is a number four, which is the darkest in the color family. And I just put that number four ink on the edges of those leaves just to get a little bit of a, um, blended look in those leaves. So some of the leaves are darker on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and color this typewriter up in pink. I'm coloring it up with my Copic markers. I am using the R81, R83, and R85 on the typewriter. And I'm also going to color up the part of the typewriter with some gray inks and for the grays I'll be using my C0, C3 as well as my blender. And I will have a list of these colors down in the YouTube description box so if you want to duplicate any of these colors you can head on down there and take a look and see what those colors are. Now I do know that some of you out there don't like to color, so in my next card I'm actually going to take this typewriter and I'm going to stamp it out on some solid color cardstock and just use the image with some black ink but let the cardstock color be the color of the typewriter. And it will make for such an easy card. And I'll also do some heat embossing with some gold in my upcoming card as well. So stay tuned for that because you'll get a second look at another way of using this stamp. So here I'm just coloring up some of the parts of the typewriter in some gray tones. I didn't want to color it up all gray. I just put some dark, which is the C3, along the edges of the um, part of the keys on that typewriter. And then I left the majority of the inside white because I didn't want it to be completely gray. And you'll see here in a moment, I'm going to take my gold glitter gel pen and I'm going to actually color the keys. So this is just a glitter gold gel pen and I just thought adding some of that gold in there, just putting some gold in those keys, I think it adds a nice accent. I love that gold and pink together. I think it's so pretty. So I will have links down in the description box for the Spellbinders Clubs. Keep in mind this is the clear stamp of the month. I'm also going to be incorporating the small die of the month. Spellbinders also has a card kit which I did an unboxing of that on my YouTube channel recently. They also have a glimmer um, hot foil club of the month. They have a large die of the month. They have a brand new embossing folder of the month. And you can also 
choose if you wanted to get all of the clubs. I know they have a special for all of the clubs if you wanted to get all of them. But I will have a link down in the description box for those clubs if you're interested in taking a look at that. So when I first saw this typewriter stamp, I absolutely fell in love with it. I don't have any typewriter stamps and I love typewriters. They actually have a special place in my heart because I taught college typing for so many years. Even though I taught it on computers, I learned how to type on a typewriter and they just have a special place in my heart. So I think this stamp set is so cute. There's also a small rectangle die that will cut out the sentiments and once you cut out the sentiments on the little rectangle sheet of paper you can actually slip it in the top of the typewriter because when you die cut this typewriter it actually puts a slit along the horizontal center in that gray bar up at the top of the typewriter and you can actually stick the paper in it like you're typing something and the paper is coming out of the typewriter which is so cute so if you belong to the club that you get the clear stamp with the dies, the dies will automatically put that slit in that typewriter. But if you just belong to the clear stamp of the month, you can still put that slit by just using a craft knife and you can do it yourself. So after I finished coloring my images, you saw me just take that gold glitter gel pen and I'm just tracing over some of the black areas of those images to add a little bit of gold glitter. Okay, so here's the dies. I went ahead and die cut all of those images out. And now I'm going to stamp out the sentiment. And the sentiment I'm going to use says, Happy Birthday to the Most Amazing Person. I make the most birthday cards, so I wanted to use a birthday um, sentiment. So I just stamped it onto some white cardstock. And then I'm going to take the rectangle die. This will cut this out so it looks like it's a piece of paper and there's that slit I was talking about you can just stick it right in there and it looks like that paper's coming out of the typewriter I think that's so cute so this die is part of the small die of the month and there are several dies I'm just showing you one here this is a large oval and it has a few different parts so if you put these pieces around the oval it will actually cut the oval out of the cardstock if you don't have those pieces around it it will cut the image into the cardstock and then this middle piece will actually cut out the middle oval but if you didn't have that middle piece and I die cut it without that middle piece then it would keep the middle gold paper as part of that decorative um, die cut but because I put the middle piece in there it cuts the middle piece out of the die so you can see the whole inside is empty now I want you to take a look at the detail on there look how pretty that detail is you can actually take some embroidery floss and if you wanted to do some stitching on this die you totally can do that now this is a larger die that will fill the front of an A2 size card but there's also a die smaller than this, which you can layer on top. And if you go to my unboxing video that I previously had on my YouTube channel, it will show you all of the dies included in the small die of the month. Okay, so here's the paper pad that comes with the card kit. And if you don't subscribe to the card kit, you can actually buy this paper pad separately. And I will have a link down below in the description box in case you're interested in that. I'm actually going to take this inside piece and I'm going to die cut this pattern paper. This pattern paper is white with gold words. It actually has gold foiling on it. So I'm die cutting the inside piece because I'm going to put that inside of this oval. And I'm just trying to see what pattern paper I can use for the background. I was just trying to go through this paper pad to see what would look nice. I know I'm going to have my typewriter inside that oval, so I just wanted to pick a paper that I thought would complement that gold foil oval. And because I knew I was going to add the flowers around the typewriter, I didn't want to go with anything too busy, so I ended up picking a solid pink. So I have an A2 size white card base, and I cut down a piece of gold mirror card stock to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I did use a rectangle die to cut the center out just to save that piece from the center. And I added the gold mirror card stock to the front of the card base. And then I cut down the solid pink pattern paper to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm just adding that right to the top. And then after I do that, I will go ahead and add that oval right to the center of the card. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could have put double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the gold merit cardstock before running it through the die cut machine. That way it will be a complete sticker. But I chose just to add the glue and I just kind of used my finger and just rubbed it in so they didn't have lots of glue seeping out of those holes and it worked pretty well. So I go ahead and press that down and then I'm going to add the inside pattern paper to that oval. You can see how that oval takes up a large part of the A2 size card front. So if you wanted just to add a sentiment inside of here, that would be a nice way to frame out a sentiment. So here I'm just adding some double-sided adhesive tape to the back of this typewriter just so that I can keep the happy birthday sentiment from falling out. And then I'm just layering the flowers. I'm just arranging them where I want them to go around my typewriter. And then once I have all of those flower pieces exactly where I want them, I will go ahead and add those to my card front. The small solid leaf stamp, it actually is the perfect size for that rose and what I did is I just went ahead and glued that leaf right onto the rose so that it had a green leaf instead of black. So here I am going ahead and putting glue on all of the leaves. I do glue down the leaves first because they are behind the typewriter and once I've glued the leaves down I will then glue the typewriter down on top. So here I'm going to go ahead and glue that typewriter down. I do peel back that double-sided adhesive tape that I had on the back of it and then just put glue on the rest. I go ahead and add that down and then I will add my last two flowers because those are going over top of the typewriter. And I really love the colors in this card. I really love how it turned out. So for my next card, I'm taking the typewriter stamp and I'm just stamping it with some black ink on some solid blue cardstock, getting a really nice impression. And the only coloring that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my gold glitter gel pen and I'm gonna color up the keys of the typewriter just to add a little bit of color, but you don't really need to have any coloring skill to do this because I'm just coloring them in with a gel pen. And then I decide to do some of those other parts just to add a little bit of gold accent. I do color up the heart and then I just add some gold lines to the bottom of the typewriter where those black lines are. Pretty easy, so you don't have to have any coloring skill to do this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that out with the corresponding die. I am gonna bring in a piece of this floral pattern paper from the paper pad that came with the card kit. And I'm also gonna bring in this little border die. This is also part of the small die of the month for February. If you use the decorative die by itself, it will put the decorative piece into the cardstock. But if you put the two outside edges around it, it will actually cut the border out of the cardstock. I'm not going to cut the border out of the cardstock completely. Instead, I just want to cut the bottom part of the cardstock off. So what I'm doing is I have this pattern paper that I cut down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I want to have the edge at the bottom of the paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure this die is straight and I'm going to tape it down once I have it straight. Now if I just die cut it now with just that die, it's going to put that decoration into the cardstock. It's not going to cut it out. But if I add the bottom part of this die, it will only cut off the bottom part of the cardstock and it will leave part of that die cut into the cardstock. And you'll see that here in just a moment. So I ran that through my die cut machine and you can see that it left part of the die in the cardstock and it just cut the bottom edge off. So now I'm actually going to cut this die out of the cardstock. So I'm going to use both of those edge dies. Just tape that down just to make sure it stays in place when I run this through my die cutting machine. So after I run it through my die cutting machine, it actually cuts out the entire border. So I'm gonna use this to layer on top of that floral piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on the back of this border edge, and then I'm gonna add it directly to the top of that pattern paper. So I'm just going to line up the holes, but before I do that, I'm just gonna make sure I have all of the holes um, poked out of the pattern paper, and then I'm gonna line it up. 
and it lines up perfectly. All I need to do is flip this over and then just cut off the edge where it extends beyond that pattern paper. So I'm just going to use my scissor and cut along that straight edge. And next I'm going to add that to the top of a piece of blue cardstock. This is the same color blue as the typewriter. And it's actually the same color blue that's in the card kit for Spellbinders. And that measures four and a quarter by five and a half, the same size as the front of an A2 size card base. So next I'm going to use some Versamark ink to stamp out the sentiment. First I'm going to use my powder tool to put some powder on that white cardstock just to make sure my embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to stick. So I inked up the stamp with the Versamark ink, stamped that down, and now I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. Just sprinkle that on to my sentiment and I'm going to heat set that with my heat tool so that's going to melt my embossing powder and this is my favorite part of the heat embossing is watching this embossing powder melt. Look how pretty those gold words are. So now I'm going to take the rectangle die, I'm going to die cut this sentiment and I'll go ahead and pop that right inside the typewriter and I'll use the double sided tape just to tape it down. Next I'm going to stamp out all of the flowers in the stamp set but this time I'm using colored cardstock so that I don't have to color. So I took my powder tool, I rubbed it over the cardstock, that's the first step in heat embossing just to make sure that your embossing powder doesn't stick where you don't want it to. And then I did stamp up my stamps with the Versamark ink, I'm starting out with the leaves. Once I had those Stamped out, I put the embossing powder over top and I'm just using my heat tool to heat set that gold into that green cardstock. It looks so pretty. Then I'm going to move on to the pink. I'm going to stamp out some of these pink flowers. And I'm also going to stamp out some yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and add my ink, stamp that down, and then I'm going to add some of the gold embossing powder and then I'm going to heat set those flowers. So again this is an easy way of using these flowers in a way that you don't have to color. So I'm just adding the gold embossing powder and heat setting that and now I have these beautiful gold flowers that are on this colored cardstock. So it really looks like that they are colored because they're on the colored cardstock. So now I'm just going to stamp out all four of those flowers onto the blue and do the same thing. So just stamp that out in the Versamark. I'm just going to add the gold embossing powder and then I will heat set that. So now I have lots of flowers that I can use for my card front. I don't end up using all of the blue ones, but I did stamp out several just because I didn't know what exactly I wanted to use at the time that I stamped them. So I'm going to go ahead and position everything where I want it to go. And once I have everything where I want it, I start with my flowers because those are in back of the typewriter. I go ahead and glue those down. And then once I have all of those glued down, I'm going to add the typewriter. Now with the typewriter, I am going to add some double-sided adhesive foam so it's going to look like the typewriter is um, raised in front of those flowers. And you'll see that here momentarily. Okay, so here's where I go ahead and add the foam. I'm just adding the foam strips and then I will um, add that typewriter to the front of the card. And then to fill in the empty space above the typewritten note, I just add a few more flowers there. And then I'm going to add that entire layer to an A2 size card base. And then to finish off this card, I'm going to take some gold gems. These are the Spellbinders gold gems. I'm just going to add one to the center of each one of those circles on that decorative border. And that is going to complete my card. I love how this card turned out. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. Please leave them down below. And be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye bye.